Here. 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 If everyone's had a chance to read the previous minutes, and there are no corrections or additions to be made, they will stand approved as presented. They are I just had one question. Um, I see in the minutes that in our auditors uh, report to us that uh, Jennifer Schatzer, in her report, uh, she made some points. She said, uh, anyway, the minutes say that uh, she advised the city to try not to transfer money solely out of the electrical fund, but to try utilizing all three enterprise funds. I, I understood her to say we we should definitely not transfer any monies out of the electrical fund. Uh, but then she we pretty much ran our uh, unrestricted funds down to zero. And, and so 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 I guess what I'm questioning is the try not to versus just not to. Well, that's that's true. She said not to, but we still we still got the option to do it. Okay. I mean, that'll be that'll be our decision. We'll try not to do that. Okay, but, luck. If, but we can if you want to correct it in some other way. Okay. No, I just want to make that point that that's what I understood her to say was not to transfer monies out of the electrical fund instead of try not to yeah. transfer monies. Yeah. In that, that that that's, that's how I took it. Okay, so maybe we should change that to not transfer monies out. Of that was at least her opinion. Her opinion yes. was that we should And that's what we we're stating not. was her opinion. Right. You're stating her opinion. Her yeah. opinion okay. was we don't. Her opinion, opinion but it still was still leaves the Her opinion that, was do it. Get that, Suzanne. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I need a motion to approve the previous minutes with the designated change, okay. please. I'll, I'll mark that motion. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we need a we'll we'll amend I, we need a motion to amend the agenda okay. first. I'll make like the motion we amend the agenda. Second. Okay, all in favor. Aye. 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 Tommy Roberts. Thank you. I'm Tommy Roberts, chairman of the uh, Douglas County Extension Council. I have with me tonight uh, Terry Fawcett and Dr. Krista Tate. They are co-county <coughs> education specialists for Douglas County Extension. I also have, <coughs> they're in the courthouse. I also have uh, Jay Chisholm here, uh, Southwest Regional Director over 17 counties, University of Missouri Extension. If you'll recall, last month, <coughs> Randy Weedmeyer and I met uh, Randy presented a, a wonderful opportunity that Mr. Chisholm uh, has for Douglas County and uh, <clears throat> you interviewed him. Uh, he had to go on to another meeting. Uh, I came back in and you were still discussing it and you were asking me questions that I could not answer and so uh, Jay Chisholm is here tonight to uh, answer those questions that you have. You bet. I don't know exactly what your, your <laughs> questions are, but uh, uh, but first off, I just want to say thank you, thank you for your continued support uh, of our extension program here. We we literally could not be you know uh, where we are uh, without your support here in Douglas County. Uh, you're you're vital to our, our to our educational program here, and so I, I just want to thank you for that. So I'll be glad to answer any questions about what they what they proposed last time. Yeah, I think. I'll let them ask, but it's centered around the person that we're talking about hiring and uh, who would be the actual employer of that person and where the funds were coming oh, yeah. from for that portion of the salary. You bet. What I, what I actually proposed was an ag educator position. An ag educator position in our system is a bachelor's level position. Most of our specialist position, most of our faculty positions are a master's level position minimum. Uh, but we, what, for this position and what I've done in some other counties, we were able to do an ag educator position and we were able, the university would pay half of the funding 
and then the county and, and the, the example that I have in the past has been the county would pay the other half of the position so what we were trying to do here and, and uh, I believe uh, uh, Terry and uh, Krista had talked to the County Commission also about you know funding a portion of that as well so we could get you know at least a half-time ag educator in this county and then the university would fund the other half you know for that position I uh, talked to Tommy, I said, I think there was a little misunderstanding as far as the cost of the position. Uh, if it's full-time, that adds, of course, full-time benefits to that, which really does drastically go, because it's on the university pay scale, it is a university employee, all of those things, you know, uh, would fall under the university benefits. So it does go up quite a bit if we make it a full-time position. So, you know, for our budget, needs I would think in Douglas County after talking to Tommy Day that we would start out with a 20 hour week uh, ag educator I think would make more sense and then you know we could grow from there any questions about that that makes sense the way I described that to you okay okay the money is the university is paying <clears throat> that half of the salary yes they're paying half of the salary what we would do for funding partners we would actually invoice our funding partners for that and then they would pay the other half of the salary to the university so it would be a true university employee you would be a funding source for that position okay. and we really have a lot of our positions with various funding sources so it's not that unusual this would, this would be a regular university of missouri employee right the difference for this employee and our regular regionals are our field specialist positions is it would only be assigned to Douglas County. Still be a university employee, but we would only, you know, not to say that they wouldn't go outside the county, especially right across the border where they might draw people into an event, but for the most part, they're targeting just Douglas County. And so that's, uh, makes it a little different than most of our positions. Most of us have multi-county assignments as our, our faculty. Okay, and the hope was that we'd split the other half of the county. That's that, the proposition. That was the hope. That's right. That's sorry. Yeah, that's how the conversation started. But I, you need to go ahead and yeah, we yes. need to follow up with. They did follow up with the county, and the county did say no uh, to the. You know, they didn't have the additional funds. Uh, well, I wasn't in that conversation, so uh, <laughs> they did not have the additional funds for that position. So as a group, but we were we were wondering if you would consider this. Is this what you want me to propose? I don't want to talk out of turn. I don't see anyone else wanting to talk about this. So we were we were wondering if the, if the city would consider this. Would you consider, you know, if you would uh, provide an additional five thousand dollars, you know, if the county extension council, the local extension council, uh, could match that with other funding sources. And that would then the university that would be half of the position if we combine those things and the university would pay their half. So what we're asking is you would fund the 25% roughly is what I'm talking about here. The position for a part-time position with Social Security and uh, you know I'm I'm roughing these out, but uh, but you know it's going to be a little over eight thousand dollars for half of that position. So what we were trying to do is give us a little bit of programming dollars too. There's obviously when you have somebody on, they're going to need a, a few things, you know, to help us do programming in the county, so that we have a little cushion for that as well. So that's really what we're is what we're asking. I think is what the, so I don't want to speak for the council because it's not really fair for me to do that. But, uh, the, they just met with the county commission yesterday. And so, because we, uh, and they said no, <clears throat> we're, we're just talking uh, today, uh, uh, perhaps something like uh, Farm Bureau or Soil and Water, you know, could we, could we go with those uh, companies, uh, organizations to uh, try and get the other 5,000? And we will um, uh, try every effort that and perhaps other avenues as well. And the city wouldn't be responsible if the county, if the county extension county couldn't come up with their portion of it, of the funding for the position, then we would, you know, then we wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, but it would, so we, I guess we're trying to, as a council, we want the council to take their responsibility to ask the city to help on a portion of it and then the university provide their half is what we're trying to do. Form a real partnership, you know, to really make it work. That's what we're trying to do. 
but they would still be working for the university. They get yes. their orders from the university. So what do we do? We get any say if we wanted something done? Would we have a say in it since we've got funding involved? Yeah, I mean, believe me, it seems like everybody has a say in our positions. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but we, no, we. I mean, yes, yeah, yes, and no. I mean, you always provide input. Our local council provides input. You know, citizens provide input. If you have something that a program that you want done that really falls into our to our scope of right. work, right. you know, we there's there's been times where I've had a county commission that wanted us to raise funds for a roof on a building that didn't really meet our scope of work. It wasn't in education. <laughs> so as long as it meets our scope of work, you know, that's <clears throat> it should be. You know, it, we should we'll always listen to you, obviously, but but. It'd still be the university position and the university position description would need to be followed in that. And the idea would bring to bring education, you know, to, to agriculture education, to farmers and rural areas, you know, also home gardeners, those types of things. But, uh, you know, it's research-based information, just like Extension's always done in the past. This is redone every year anyway. It is redone every year, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So, now, obviously, we hope we show enough value that, that you want to continue, everywhere. right? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I've got a few comments to make about it. I, I thought we were kind of leaning last time. Uh, our proposal was, well, if the county would kind of do their part, you know, we would step in. But it sounds like they're reluctant to do to do their part. They're kind of pulling away. You know, uh, uh, the Extension Council, by legislation, is to be funded by federal, state, and county funds, not municipal funds. Uh, Believe me, I appreciate the work, good work that the Extension Council does, and I believe it's an asset to the county. Uh, but, you know, we started as a city here several years ago when, you know, the county wasn't able to fund their part. We stepped in generously with a $10,000 uh, contribution uh, to help the county out. And, uh, and, and I think that was, you know, generous of, of the city to do that. So I would be reluctant myself to uh, uh, go along with giving you know an additional five thousand especially since the county doesn't want to do their part to uh, support sure. it when it's you know it's legislated that county state and federal funding will be used uh, um keith so. they did say that they told me yesterday the reason that they wouldn't do it or couldn't do it was because their insurance costs went up this year 30 percent and so it 30% their insurance costs for their employees. And that was the reason, which is about $65,000 added expense for them this year. And that was the reason they said they could not um, go the extra 5,000. And you know, my reluctance isn't, don't, don't take me wrong, it isn't because the county won't step up and do their part too. Uh, it's, it's part of us because of our uh, uh, fiscal position now with our budget mm -hmm. and uh, you know, our, our limited unrestricted funds that we have, uh, you know, we would love to say yes anytime anybody came by and asked, you know, for, you know, funding uh, help, we would love to do that. But, you know, at the same time, we, we have projects going on in the city. Uh, you know, we had to go to the county and, or the, and ask the voters to approve a sales tax so we could build some streets. And, uh, you know, that didn't pass, so we got streets to build. We got you know, bathroom in the park to build. We've got a uh, electrical building to build. Uh, we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of projects coming up that that will demand funds. So that, you know, that's kind of the reason. That I just wanted you to know, like you know, what they told us. Not that, you know, they just didn't say no. We're not yeah. going to do it. They did explain, and I did explain to them that I would be sharing that with you all when I came here tonight. So I just to know. And I and I can't say again how much we appreciate the you know the funding you have provided the contributions of you know it's just been essential for us to be here you know and so I, I appreciate that and you're right it's not you know state statute uh, for the municipalities to participate you know some do you know I mean we have other counties or other cities in the region who provide some funding you know they supplement some county budgets you know from time to time in various ways so. Uh, so it's not unheard of, but you know I do understand your reluctance, and I understand the pressures that we're all under, you know, as you know tax dollars are are short. Of time. We were just trying to. I think the idea was we were trying to find a position 
that people would see value in and we could build a program from that. We've had, it seems like we've tried a few things, but we just don't have enough funds to, to make something go here, you know, in Douglas County. And it, this, this county has, you know, ever really ever since I've been here has been the, it's, the county, it's the poorest funded county we have in the region. And I just, it's just hard for us to, to really get anything off the ground uh, when we're just trying to get the bills paid. Uh, with rollerblade, so and I, you know, I, but I appreciate everything that you guys have done. Uh, again, we would have trouble even meeting the needs of the general public who walk in the door right. if we couldn't, without if we didn't, end. yeah, without your ten thousand dollars that you guys contribute. So, so I really appreciate that. Well, I, I have another question. Sure. Did, did I understand you right that you were proposing uh, maybe to contact other organizations? Uh, in the city and county to see if they might help fund that other five? Yes. So that's something that you're considering doing? Yes. You know, we wouldn't, I, the way I, when we were from our discussion, we, you know, we wouldn't ask for the contribution from the city unless we could come up with that. Right. Those, that other half from other contributors. So we can see then. Okay. Well, we can. Okay. Yeah. To see if you do. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, we can put that then on the kind of the back of the extension council to, to provide those funds. See if they can provide those funds, and then you guys could consider it again. Okay. Does that work for you, Tom? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you You're for considering that. We have more time. Yeah. Right. We, we appreciate that. I don't know how much time we've got to think about it. <laughs> Is this something you were wanting to? Really begin in January. Well, I mean, the budget year, you know, starts at the county for you know in January. January so, to, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a lot easier for me to sell the idea to everybody if we all have the money in place. So, I, you know, <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah, it, you know, once we get the funds together, I think that would be the time for us to okay. to really get serious about it and consider. It. Thank you very much for thank coming. You. Thank you. All thank, and, thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank He's you. got a meeting in Ozark County that he needs to get to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Nice Good to meet you. Take care. Good. Lendl? Yes. You're up. All right. My name is Lendl Lakey. Um, I, well, the reason I come in here today, I just wanted to kind of clear up some of what happened um, on this hunting thing. First of all, I sure wasn't trying to cause a ruckus. I wasn't trying to put Abe on the map, which seemed like happened on the deal. Um, I'm an avid hunter. I, I spent a lot of time hunting. This is my son, Justin. We both hunt a lot. Uh, that started simply by we saw a big deer. Of course, we've seen a lot of deer crossing down there at that place. I've seen a big deer crossing during gun season. Of course, no, you can't hunt during gun season. I went up to Miss Shoals, Daisy Shoals place and asked for permission to hunt the property. Uh, she told me we, we could. There's 28 acres of that property there between the churches. One, I started to say one of the biggest reason I come up here, there's a lot of misconceptions. I've had some people that think that we were hunting in subdivisions and in between houses. Somebody told me I'd killed a deer in somebody's backyard and I was hunting in brush. I mean, that's, that's what it was. But before I did it, I, I, I called the, the city office and I, I should have wrote down who's, who I talked to about hunting in the city and they told me it was okay. My cousin told me he didn't think it was legal. And so we looked up online. Pull, uh, city ordinance online, and we went through it from one end to the other. And, and you guys you know what the old ordinance was. There was nothing about bow hunting in there. So I went in there and hunted. I put, we put two stands up in on that property, and the very first day that I hunted it, I actually, I shot, I probably took the biggest deer I've ever shot. <laughs> and I, I hit it, I backed out. Long story short, I never found a deer. I found all kinds of blood. I definitely hit it. I'm pretty sure that somebody else found the deer. I, I, I spent the better part of the weekend there looking for it. During that time, I had two or three people tell me that several people were upset about us hunting in there. And I'm like, well, I did everything legal, you know, make sure it was. And, and of course, you guys all know the rest of the story. I think five days after I shot it, we were in there looking for it, and police pulled up, asked me if we'd, you know, if I'd shot a deer on the city property. Um, I didn't deny it. I said, yeah, I was up on Daisy Shoals property. By the way, I had permission to hunt on uh, Mary Hale's property next to it, too. There's 13 acres there. And, I think it's 28, so I had 40 some acres of, of property. I'm not even hunting within sight of, of a house where I, where I was at, where my stand was at. Not one of them is, but the one I shot off of it wasn't. Anyway, uh, long story short, 
I told uh, the officer was David Overcast, and uh, he said he was going to write me a ticket for uh, discharge of a weapon. So the chief of police had told him to write a ticket for it. And I t we showed him there what the ordinance said, and he went and talked to the chief of police and he said to write it for me anyway. I came up and talked to David, the mayor, right after that. He did dismiss the ticket the next day because, I mean, there was nothing in the ordinance about bow hunting. And here's where, we, you know, again, and we, I didn't find out till later that you guys met within just a few days. My son, by the way, went in there and he did kill a large deer in there, but it wasn't the same one that I, I shot. And two days after he shot that deer, you guys passed this ordinance, which we saw as just aimed directly at us to stop, stop us from hunting in there. And of course, and I will tell you, I did not contact any of the news. I didn't contact the newspaper. I didn't contact KY3. I think it's somebody from Facebook or whatever. They approached us wanting to write a story on it. The only reason I agreed to is I thought people ought to know, you know, when you got somebody that is, again, this is my opinion, is using their position, their authority to write tickets for something that's obviously not illegal, just for their own agenda because they don't want you hunting. I saw that that is a problem. I mean, I don't care what position it is, if you use your position to, to do that. So that was the only reason that I went along with, with even, you know, letting it, the paper or the uh, TV interview us. But anyway, um, my, that is part of my deal. I want to be here. I just wanted to clear the water. I, I was not trying to cause a ruckus or, or anything. We, I just, I like to hunt. That place, you know, most of you guys know I run business here. We do just south of town. It's handy for us, it's close, I can do it work. I, I hunt, with, during hunt season, if I'm not out on the road, I'm in a tree or a stand probably every other day. <laughs> probably way more than I should, to be honest. But anyway, I, uh, it's handy for us, you know, to hunt here close to town. And I can be at work in five minutes, I can cut out, you know, half hour, hour before dark, and then jump in a stand. I have land I can hone out of my place, but it takes longer to get there and back. Um, as far as this, and, and I, I understand you guys passed that ordinance in a hurry, and, and it turned into, I think, a, a mess, and, and again, I, I, I saw the new uh, re, uh, proposal that you guys are planning on doing, that the Douglas County Herald had it posted online, I guess, which what I understand is basically going back to the old, the old uh, ordinance and then just cutting out hunting, basically, is what, with a crossbow, is what it amounts to. Um, what I have to say that, I mean, obviously I'm looking at this from a hunter standpoint. You know, I, I like to hunt and I want to hunt. Um, I got to looking online and, and this is what, I, what I'm, you know, proposing to the city is that you need to see what other cities are doing. If you get online, because most other cities' ordinances are online just like ours are. I could not come up, I found one city that outlaws hunting. You go, it don't matter where it's Kansas City. I've, in fact, I've got a list of them, but it takes a long time to read through them. I spent an hour online probably, and uh, like Ozark, Missouri, their restrictions is you have to have three acres, you have to hunt from an elevated stand. I went through, I mean, a lot of these. Kansas City, you have to have 15 acres. If you, you know, a lot of them, it has to be zoned agricultural or rural, uh, rural residential, I think. There's a lot of variations, but that is a pretty good theme in all them cities. Anywhere from two acres to 15 acres is what I found. That if you had that, even though he's in the city limits, a lot of them had a restriction that you you had to hunt from an elevated stand, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, I was I was hunting from an elevated stand. My arrow was, you know, it was laying five yards from where where I hit the deer. I mean, if, if you're hunting up in the air, some of them say ten foot, and if you're hunting like that, the arrow there's there is no danger of going off on somebody else's land. But uh, some of them had restrictions that you couldn't be within a certain distance of a school or a park. Uh, anywhere from 100 feet to 400 feet. Uh, there was restrictions. A lot of them uh, you had to have a hunter safety class. And again, I'm in favor of all kinds of, you know, some of them are as simple as it just says you can hunt the city as long as it doesn't endanger other people or property. As long as your arrow or whatever it is doesn't go, you know, onto other property. I was amazed at Jefferson City. They allow hunting with rifles in the city. I couldn't believe it when I was looking at that, but I, I'm not proposing that. I don't think that's a smart move. <laughs> but th this is, the, you know, my, my deal is, and again, I'm not a, a deer biologist or animal biologist, but I mean, there comes a point when the place is overrun with deer. I mean, that, that, I mean that's one reason I like to hunt in there. I've seen more deer in there. I can see more deer in one city in there than all 
I mean, we're overrun with deer. I mean, you see them. In fact, one day when I was in there looking for that deer, a deer ran out and hit a car, a car got hit there. I'm sure you guys can probably see how many deer are getting hit there. So, you know, but again, that's that's not, to be honest, that's not the reason I'm here is for the, the health of deer. I like to hunt. And, and I, I just see that this ordinance, even the one that you're proposing, with no broadheads or no, no chance to hunt at all, is, is pushed by an anti-hunting agenda. Uh, you know, I can't see that Ava represents an anti-hunting, you know, group of people. Uh, I, I mean, in fact, our business, I've, I've been swamped by, you know, people supporting, supporting some of the deals. Like, you know, why are they just saying no hunting at all? Uh, so, you know, again, I, I, I just recommend, here's what I'm saying. There's five or well, seven more days, I think, of bow season left, and it's over until next September anyway. What I, what I would believe with the council is to, you know, look say, hey, let's look at these other cities and see what's a common sense way that, you know, we can still deal with the, you know, the deer herd. I, I recommend talking to the, uh, Mark Henry, the Missouri Conservation Department. Uh, some cities have special hunts. Uh, one other restriction that I thought was a, was a good idea, there's a lot of cities that require you to have a, either your name or your hunter ID number on your arrows. So if, you know, if an arrow does, you know, deer wounded deer and winds up somewhere else or you know, th there's a lot of common sense, you know, restrictions. Some of them uh, won't allow the uh, uh, miners. Well, again, I, I see all that stuff as, as smart things. But to just say, no, we're done with hunting in the city, it ain't gonna happen. I, I just see that as caving in to, a, to an anti-hunter agenda. That, that's, that's the bottom line to me. Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, there's, there's a lot of people in the city and that just see it as, as, as that the, the people haven't had any say in the thing. And again, I think there has been a lot of misconceptions about, you know, what we were doing. And I'm not one. I, I think it'd be stupid to let people hunt, you know, in the backyard and in between houses. And, but if you say, all right, we want a, a barrier of a certain distance or certain acres, or like I say, put so many safety things in effect, I, that's, that's what I'm proposing. And I would like to see you at least look into it before you, you vote on that. And I understand that that ordinance does need to be fixed so that the police can use their guns and kids aren't getting arrested for shooting BB guns and, and that kind of nonsense. <laughs> so if anybody's got any questions about, you know, what we were doing, or, um, I'm open. So. Were you hunting with crossbow or? Yes, I was hunting with crossbow. When I was hunting. <clears throat> and I will tell you that there are some cities that, that allow bows that don't allow crossbows. Mm -hmm. Not very many. I think I ran across a couple that that would allow regular bows, but they wouldn't allow crossbows, and I'm not sure why. Most of them just specifically said, you know, bows or crossbows. And again, I, I would just implore you to, you know, spend some time. I, I spent probably an hour online, and and I, I'm serious. That other than that one, and the way I come across this, that town, I can't. It's over at Loma Linda, mm -hmm. I think was the name of the town, and the way I found it was uh, the the anti-hunting group were bragging that they had got this town to pass an anti-hunting ordinance. Other than that town, I did not find a single town. I'm not saying they're not there because obviously I didn't look at every town, but I just, you know, ones I was thinking about, I, and I just Googled, you know, uh, Missouri hunting, you know, city hunting ordinances. And I, as far as I know, I couldn't find another one that said no hunting in the city of Paris. They, let's say they all had restrictions. Some of them were as simple as, you know, hunt in a safe manner, you know, where it's not endangering other people or property. Uh, some of them get pretty detailed about how many feet and which direction your stand could face and you know I guess it, there is a lot of difference in that but and then again the other end of the scale was Jefferson City where go out and shoot your 30 out six in the city I guess uh, I, <laughs> that really shocked me when I found that one but, but again I, I think there needs to be more study on it before you just outlaw hunting that's any other questions Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you for hearing me out. You bet. We'll see you. We got a thing in the mail from the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association. I'll read the part of it. As you know from prior notification, Suzanne Welsh has achieved the designation of Missouri Registered City Clerk. Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association consider it a milestone accomplishment for your clerk. And there's more to the letter. Then 
Come here and I'll come to you. She didn't know I had it. This is a proclamation they sent for Suzanne. Suzanne Wells is currently an active member of the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association, as well as the South Central Division of Municipal Clerks, and whereas Suzanne Wells has demonstrated a desire to enhance her skills as a municipal clerk by pursuing additional training from the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association and the Missouri Municipal League, and whereas the intent and goal of the clerks and Finance Officers Association is to encourage and provide a certification program for continued education and personal development. Suzanne Welch is a perfect example of what can be achieved as a municipal clerk. And having demonstrated her dependability, leadership, and desire to learn, was awarded the designation of Missouri Registered City Clerk by the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association on December 19, 2018. Therefore, the city of Ava recognizes Suzanne Welch's accomplishments and the designation of her Missouri Registered City Clerk as achieved by Suzanne Welch. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Suzanne. Thank you. That's the letter that goes with that. Becky? Uh, your package is your financial reports for the end of December. Um, overall, still running uh, about $2.2 million. Um, most of the funds are holding fairly steady. Uh, general fund is somewhat in the red, but that's because I haven't transferred any money. Because we were so <laughs> but we're looking, as I try to get caught up, I've, I've been behind. and. As I get caught up on everything, probably at the end of January, I'll look to see about transferring possibly some money out of water funds to, to cover those balances. As you can see, electric fund is, is pretty low as far as overall, but, but we're still doing okay. Well, I think you answered my question. I was going to ask you about that minus 65, and that's what that means. We're just yes. running in the red. Yes. Yeah, it's running, running in the red, but you know. Because we pool our account, um, we don't run individual checkbooks. We have one account. The, the monies overall are still holding fine. But um, before June 30, we would have to have that brought back up so that it's standing on its own by the end of the year. So, um, Peggy, I'm looking at the electric fund, the pool cash or checks, checkbook fund. With the 53000 in that electric fund, would that be unrestricted? That's unrestricted. Okay. Yeah. But you drop down to the uh, savings account miscellaneous, the five hundred and five hundred and two thousand. That's also unrestricted. It's just it's, also it is, unrestricted. it's just money that we have set back. You know, we talked about at one point in time about trying to have about one point five million or better set back. And so at that time we started putting money back and we got up to about a five hundred thousand dollar mark and I just left it there. We didn't have enough in the operating Part of it to really do that anymore, so I've just been hanging on to it. That's that 500,000. Our, our moped utility bill usually runs anywhere from three to four hundred thousand, so I just I just try to keep that back there in case we would actually hit a really hard spell and need at least one month to to get through. So, so we're using that amount to pay the moped bill, then that's not. Transferring, yeah, that's no. using it what, for what it kind just, of account? Yeah, I just, I just leave it there. I don't, I don't actually move it. I just leave it in case we get in a bind. Okay. Hopefully, we won't ever get there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Dean Parks was that his name? He recommended 1.5 to 2 million, I and, think. Right, just in the electric fund yeah. alone. Yeah. So really, honestly, we should have a little over 2 million or so in reserve, whereas 2 million is our operating. So we, we've got a ways to go to get to. Well, we can start putting some stuff back, but we, we probably do need to be, and Suzanne and I have talked about this a little bit here in the near future, we probably do need to be looking at some rain and electric studies to just make sure that we're doing everything didn't, as best we can. Didn't part of this go down? We had more that one time, but didn't it, when the tornado hit a few years we ago, used then a lot. we used up a we lot of that. Down. We and, uh, pretty good. That's what I was thinking. That, uh, we and got it in pretty good shape until that storm. Yeah. Yeah. And then we and then we keep transferring out, you know, mm -hmm. to try to cover those those extras. And it's just over a period of time it's finally kind of wore it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 
What I'm going to propose, what, what <coughs> I'm proposing is that we take the old ordinance, <coughs> like we've got it here, just like it was before. I might add we had no trouble with the ordinance until the bow hunting happened. Make the correction for the bow hunting, add an exception for target practice, and put it back in place of the one that we passed last time, which had some additional stuff in it and did not have the provision for bow hunting. This one doesn't even address BB guns. So uh, we have never really allowed hunting in the city. That's true. If that if we want to change that sometime down the line, we can. But I think in the meantime, my proposal is that we go ahead and put it back, and then in time, if we want to do something different, we can. So look at that. Decide if you want to do that or table it. Or do it. Yeah, I was concerned about being able to on private property, and we addressed that. That was my that was my. Being able to do what? Well, target practice in your backyard, if you want to. With a bow? Yeah. Okay. Either one, either one, like, yeah. But before you, it said you couldn't. And you, With the you field should. tips only. Well, yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, I, uh, I agree with uh, uh, Lindell on the, uh, the population, overpopulation, but we can have special hunts, and, and most mm -hmm. of the cities, that's what most of the cities do, and uh, we'd have to do that with Mark. Yeah, it would have to go through. I would yeah. have a conservation agent, and uh, we talked to that. But uh, but you don't need an ordinance to do no. that. No, no, no. You can have special. No, I wouldn't mind for that. And I wouldn't mind Mark coming in sometime. We did. Uh, we'd ask him if we would. In fact, you don't. You mentioned that. Not, yeah. Yeah. Not well. Long. Well, it's gone well in Springfield. Yeah. It's uh, uh, places that uh, big and then, three, yeah. in Springfield when you kill a deer, you got and there's no restrictions on it, like you said. You, you got to go so far up in a tree stand and yeah. Yeah. so you're shooting it down at a will traumatize children. <laughs> well, we've got two areas where we've got a lot of deer, and one of them is mm -hmm. the one he's talking about, the other's at the airport. Yeah, the airport. <laughs> you know, That's when you have to go out and run the deer off to yeah. get the plane to land, yeah. All of those deer come over to me. Yeah. So this concerns the air rifle, air gun, which would be a BB gun. Or a gun. Being able to use that in your backyard. Yeah. This one says you can. No, this one you can't. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay. But in your, you got to stay in your own yard. Not up here. Your boat. Yeah. All of it. No. Okay, wait just a minute. Because that one's any description with the same because that's how it all was in the pipeline and closure. What's the way? Nothing contains any section. Yeah, there's no provision for your backyard and yeah. for private property in there. Okay, wait just a minute. I've read so many of them. Yeah, I'm actually right on there. It showed it. Yeah, the only thing this, this one allows you to do on private property is target practice with your bow. That's what I see. Okay, I think you're right. Yeah. They show me I'm off the front person. So I'm not I would really like to see us go back to the drawing board. I think we could do something better. I know we want to keep it simple, but instead of just banning these. Uh, these weapons, I think it would be wise to just regulate, you know, their use. Uh, you know, this one, you can't shoot a paintball gun in the city limit or a, you know, a pellet gun in the city limit. And I think there are a lot of areas that would be conducive where people could target practice with a BB gun, a pellet gun, or maybe even I was thinking this one was, but on it, uh, one practice. of the other ones uh, that I read uh, specifically said, but and I noticed on one of the other ones that uh, you're going to have to be really careful about that because it mentioned, uh, uh, I'll call it pneumatic, and uh, 
which would, would anything shot with with compressed air. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful about that, you're going to start you're going to start getting into construction equipment. Nail guns are compressed air. Yeah. And <laughs> you got you have to really be careful about that. Uh, and they're lethal. Yeah. yeah. But you can use that. Yeah. But I, I like this here, but I, I think we need to put that in there where you can do it on your own property. I thought it was on there. I read, like I said, I read so many different ordinances. <coughs> well, that can be done. Yeah, I, you know, I would really like to, you know, uh, let them make some good points uh, about taking a look at some of these other uh, city ordinances. And some of them, they don't just choose to ban weapons, they choose to regulate their use. And uh, I think that's a much uh, uh, wiser way to uh, handle it than, than just you know, saying, well, we want to ban all these farms. Let's just regulate their use. Uh, you know, there's, there's some very good examples uh, you know, that we could look at and, and uh, follow their example on Ozark as a good one. So I'd really like us to take another look at, at uh, you know, drafting something that I think would uh, be a little more comprehensive than than this 1044. Well, do we need to go ahead with our business and call a special night meeting sometime? Well, it's going to take more and more night meeting to do this. Uh, if we've got one in place that we don't really like, so. What would be wrong with just uh, 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 sending the one that's in place that we don't really like and going back to our original one that we had until we can, uh, until we can draft one that we like. We can do that. Well. We, we can do that because there's still no season, so they, they can still go back in there and be hunting within the city limits. I think, yeah, I think that's what they're, I think that's what they're getting at. They're going to, to bow out the rest of the, one more week, I think. I think that's the, the whole lot there. But I thought that was in the Like I said, I read so many ordinances. Okay, we can repeal 142, not, not uh, initiate this one. Make a motion to have that portion of this ordinance and repeal it for the Okay, we can do that. That's and then we would revert back to our old yeah. ordinance? Yeah. Okay. But this one is going to make that connection. Okay. This is one that's uh, that you can't do that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would make a motion then that we uh, that we move forward with Ordinance 1044, just a portion of it, the first portion, uh, an ordinance of the City of Ava of Missouri repealing Ordinance 1042, the one we have right now, and then revert back to our original one, and then uh, I would make that motion. Well, first we want a motion to repeal. 1042, is that the current one? Yes. Okay. The motion has been made to repeal the current one, 1042. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, I'm, I'm going go uh, along with yeah. that because I, I do want that in there yeah, where yeah. we can, uh, like, choose. <clears throat> Pellet gun, BB gun, calm your own premises. Yeah. Okay. And I thought that I thought it was in this one, just, but it's not. Yeah. So do we need do I need to make a motion to uh, to uh, revert back to the old uh, ordinance, which would be uh, ten forty two. He's talking about putting the all back. So, mm -hmm. which, yeah, that would be the one we had before we. Yeah. It's what was the uh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Just the same. Reinstate the Reinstate the original. Previous. Previous. So, so that's the issue. You're in there, right? You're in there, right? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. 
that's exactly what's going to happen. So okay, well, that's what the motion is. Uh, uh, and replacing it with Replacing it with yeah, the original dam. Everybody realizes we're, 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 we're lambonating up in there. 464 with the ordinance. Just 464. I think it's 10. Yes. Well, because 1042. Was the one? Was that the one we passed? No, here. Yeah, oh, that's all there. Okay. Need, yeah. Okay. You're right. So the green state four six four. Yeah. 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 So that. And I lost everything. The old one or that's what you pulled too. I don't know that I've got. Uh, but I've got it. Here's the. Yeah. Here's the old one. What's that? Okay, it's 464. Yeah, the motion was to uh, repeal 1042, reinstate 464, chapter chapter 62, section 177. Yeah. Okay, that's that. That's the original one. Yeah. Which one do? Yeah. 1044 was the one we were just yeah. going to pass. Now, yeah. 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 we haven't sure we haven't get that. Yeah. 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 yeah, we want to repeal 1042. Yeah. Most of them would get on there. For yeah. sure, a lot of sheets are practice, practice. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean. Okay, are we okay on that, that motion? The motion to repeal ordinance uh, 1042. Mm -hmm. Which is the one they have in effect now. Reinstate that. Code 464, Chapter 62, Section 177. Okay. Yeah. Motion's been made. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We were to have a pre bid conference last Tuesday. And, uh, our architect didn't show. I got a hold of him. He was in Oklahoma. He got these dates mixed up. The pre bid will take place tomorrow in the morning at 9 o'clock. So we just set another day. So that's where we are on the electric building. The fire station, if you have time, you ought to stop by there and just look and see if you ever were in it before. Uh, I'll do that. It looks like, it looks like a different place. Good. The ceilings. All been repaired inside. It's been painted. Ceiling's been painted. We've redone some of the wiring. We've taken out gas heater hanging down. We've taken the ventless heater out. We've put new heating and cooling in there. And we got over and working on the hallway. There's a breezeway between the office and the bays because originally they were separate buildings. Mm -hmm. So you have a door that comes out of the office, you cross a little breezeway, and then you've got a door you go through to get in where the fire trucks are. Had to put a new door there. It was gone. The ceiling was bad. We tore it all out. You got it in and it rained and it leaked. So now we're getting the roof fixed where the two roofs join. And uh, the R. Lewis went and looked at me and said, it's just a matter of flashing. But we're gonna have to have it fixed and then we're gonna have to pray for rain and see if it leaks before we fix the ceiling. So it's kind of in limbo, but that hallway has all been painted. The bathroom has been cleaned up, awful, and painted, and uh, it looks a lot different inside. And once that's done, then they'll start looking at what they think they want to do about the floor, but it's a dirty carpet that's been in there for a long, long time. So a lot's been done, and we've had good people in there working. Uh, Greg told me today he got ready to paint the ceiling and ran his hand across it and it was grainy. And that's because whoever painted it before had dirt in the paint and on the roller. He had to sand the ceiling in the office uh, in order to go in and paint it. So there's there been lots of holes. Been, it's blocked. And so there have been lots of holes that have been put in there. Those have all been caulked and painted. And um, Lots of caulking. Uh, rain did blow in the back door when we had that real windy day and heavy rain. And we fixed the back door so that didn't happen the last time. So right now we're waiting on the ceiling and the, and the roof to be fixed so we can finish the ceiling. There's about four hours worth of work left in that little breezeway. 
and that's where we are on the fire station. The bricks, uh, we've pretty well finalized how we think that's going to work. Bricks on the, the lower part. And uh, we've got the forms for them. The bricks will have three lines that we can put on them. In other words, I could have uh, Stephen Norman, U.S. Army, Vietnam. Or I could have U.S. Army in his rank. Or, you know, there's some leeway there about what you put. But it's three lines and about 16 spaces or so per line. And a person will come in and, and go to Suzanne's office and she'll kind of handle them like she has the cemetery and keep a separate record. Fill out the form. They'll sign the form. Suzanne will go over the form with them. The cost of having the brick engraved is 50, it's been set at $50. Then that form will be sent to Katie West who's going to do the lasering on those bricks. And when uh, let's say you buy two or three bricks, the receipts you get when you come over here and pay, they'll have the names of those people on that receipt. And then when Katie delivers them, we thought we'd have them delivered down to the maintenance shed, and that's not going to work. She can deliver them here, and Suzanne will check them in. Here's, here's what we're, we're paying for, and check them. Try to double check to be sure that their legs are tight. And if you do 500 to 1,000, you have to guess that we're probably going to screw one up somewhere along the way. But we'll do our very best to double check everything to be sure that the bricks are in inscribed properly. And she's got a particular way that she's, of course, when the person leaves, they'll leave with a copy of their um, form. She'll take the original form and she's got some, some sleeves and she slips them in and she'll put them in there alphabetically. And each binder will hold about 250. So she's going to end up with about three or four bucks by the time it's done. And then she's keeping a log. You know, trying to cover all of her bases. And if there's something else in there that we hadn't thought of, no doubt it'd come up in the beginning. But that's the plan. I I have I'm going Thursday to talk to uh, American Legion. Uh, Scott Huffman was to come in and talk to him, and he hasn't come in yet. I'll try to go down next Tuesday to the Veterans Memorial Group and take a form or two and let them see what we're doing and let them ask questions. One of the questions was, can, uh, let's say I want to put a brick here with my name on it. No, I can't do that. I'm not a veteran. Um, my brother, I can put a brick in there for my brother. He's a veteran. This is just going to have veterans in it. You can't just, this isn't a money raising yeah. thing where you just put somebody's name on a brick. This is veterans. Are we going to certify that they're veterans? Nope. You come in and say that Jim Curry was a veteran. That's fine. We fill the form out, put it in. We don't have any way to verify anyway. Uh, let's say in Jim's case, I try to find the, the discharge papers. You know, you know, maybe you got it, maybe you don't. I mean, it's going to be, you never, you, you, we found out the hard way on those markers, foot markers. You've got to have the birth date and full name and the right war in order for them to find the veteran in the list. Or you've got to have the discharge papers. Listen, there are going to be lots of people you can't get that information on. So, we just going to take your word for it. You say they're a veteran, they're a veteran. You fill the form out, pay your $50, your name goes on the grid. But, if you're not a veteran, we don't want to break in there. Not in this pathway. Maybe sometime there will be a fundraising thing, but that's, that's going to be different from this. So we've kicked it around, we've talked about it, and made changes about every other day, and thought of something else that we hadn't, hadn't come up. But that's where we are on that. My, our attention was to let the Veterans Memorial Group um, VFW and American Legion 
all know about it about the same time. So we're open. We're open. So it's, so it's that was my next question. We're open for yep. it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was on Facebook. Yeah. She's been on Facebook. I, I've already filled my forms out and turned them in. So it kind of used me as a guinea pig in the beginning. Uh, down there at the memorial, I know we talked once before about that frisbee golf hole right there that is just right outside. Do we need to look at moving it? If so, Sherry, Sherry said they are moving that. Okay, way. because I, I noticed the other day when they were down there playing frisbee, they had taken down some of the Bears. the tape so they could get. They just haven't done it yet. But okay. She did they are moving it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't want to we haven't touched it there. because we don't play frisbee golf. And I didn't want to, you know, it's got to be put in a certain place. Yeah. And they don't know where it can go. Okay. That's where we are on the bricks. We've done a lot of work on those bricks. Uh, Katie's going to buy the bricks. We'll pay her so much per brick for her work. She's bought a new machine. Turn around ought to be. Well, now it doesn't really matter because we're not laying the brick. Oh, 15, 20 a day or so. She told me 25. I'm going to guess 15. It may take longer than she thinks to do all that. When, so. when do you think we'll start? And I know we need to get as many as we can before we ever start a path. Yeah. Well, we just advertise it heavily. Uh, I, I need to get a hold of Carl. And it's probably time to put some more gravel, some more rock in there because it's packed down. Um, we need to have that at a certain level. Um, Possibly spring? I, what we put in there was spring to early summer. Yeah. Give us a little bit of leeway. <coughs> and uh, because we've got to have, once we get the gravel in there, we've got to have curb done. Right and I found that with Jeremiah. Thank you. It's a concrete curb. Re you said you could put, like my dad was World War II, and if you wanted to, you could put 1941 and to 1945. Sure could. If that's what you want. Yeah, to do. so you're gonna have gonna have that whole line. Yeah, you can put you can put three mm -hmm. I know but the one like on one line you've got enough room to put a US Army nineteen Seventy to seventy-two, or you know what? And if you want to put rank, or what you can, or you can't, whatever. You oh want yeah, to do, you can. It's whatever we want. Uh -huh. With you, you can do it. You got to remember, she'll help with that. Each, each thing is a space on there. So we're looking at sixteen spaces. So uh, World War One didn't take up much. World War Two doesn't. Vietnam doesn't take up much. You put Vietnam in the days. You put. You're going to have a lot of leeway what you, what you can put on there is what I'm saying. As long as, as long as it's not so long it will fit on the line. But you're going to have about 16 spaces through line. I think we'll get most, most things on there, I hope. So we're, kind of, we're kind of proud it's, it's going to look good. Yeah. Uh, we have, I've had people ask if we're still picking up brush and that kind of stuff, and the answer is yes. They've been doing some line work, but they're aware that we've got little piles of brush everywhere. We've got them all out where I live, I've got them where Noah lives. And uh, we've had some guys on vacation, this and that, but they're aware of it, because I mentioned, I mentioned it to Kevin again today. We did, they, we, they were out in Averview Heights, working on a line one the truck turned in some way and the brush fell off and hit the fire marshal's pickup and broke his window windshield. So we we were taking care of that and getting that fixed. <coughs> uh, we're doing uh, we didn't turn that in on insurance. It didn't hurt his pickup. The uh, <coughs> one of the things in looking at our ordinances is that it's been 2012 since we've updated our ordinances and it really uh, we're, we really need to update our city plan every five years 
It should not really go any longer than that to update our city ordinances. And so Municode, there are different people who do that. Municode is the one that we use, and they're as good as, what's the other one? General Code. General Code. But what they'll do, if we do the whole thing, which is what we want to do, they'll take each page, they'll have an attorney that does nothing but work in ordinances there, and they go through them. They make all of, sure all of our ordinances match the state, there's no conflict with state law. And uh, our ordinances, uh, requirements for municipal court, the fines and all of that is changing because we're going online. <coughs> and uh, it, besides, it just needs, it needs to be done. Now, I'll tell you now, it's about a $5,000 shot. Now, they haven't gotten back to tell us, but the last estimate was 47. 4700 We're paying them. $1,700 every time. Or what are we paying them? Monthly or yearly? Annually. Was it 950 We're paying about $1,000 a year. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, she called to kind of see if the cost was still not the same. Forty-seven fifty. Now, what update? That, that was last year, less than a year. Oh, okay, that's right. So, so it's, it's not really too old time. And we're paying. We're paying nine. I'm pretty sure I saw nine fifty a year. I knew it's nine something, but I couldn't remember what it was. But I think what they do on that nine fifty is they, they would think about ten of them or twelve of them, different sections and check them. So I'm just I'm just telling you, we're going to go ahead and, and go forward with that and let the council know what we're going to do. Um, so they will be going through all the ordinances. Is this a good time to? Uh to uh, this may be good down to update our weapons ordinance, and then they can go through that as well. That's what that, that's what that is. Yeah. Is them going through the whole book? And well, we can. We we'll, we'll be able. To, yeah. uh, have we ever had a representative come down from them? We did from the other one. I can. Uh, might not be a bad idea. That's pretty good way. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is they'll just go through the ordinances we have in the book. If we want to renovate our weapons ordinance, now would be a good time to do it and get it in there so it can be part of that process. Yeah, right, because they... That's what I'm saying. Hmm. And it yeah. might, it might just very not fun. be a bad idea at this time very fun to have them pull some of those ordinances for us for our... They'll, they'll give us recommendations and then we'll have to take... It'll, it'll be time consuming to read type them for our city, like City of Ava, and then look them over, and we may do a few each meeting. I mean, just to agree each meeting until we read through yeah. them. But I, I think we can specifically request yes. that one for weapons mm -hmm. issue. Okay. Anyway, this is an objection. We'll, we'll go ahead and get in touch with me to go. And, and that to see something please. Um, I left anything out, Suzanne. Court docket. Uh, court docket. Mm -hmm. The motion to approve the court docket. So <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion to go into close. Motion to go into close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.